Welcome to the top 5 auto advice. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more car tips. In this video, I am going to show how to change an alternator in AC4 Corvette. First of all, you're going to need a T50 Torx and a ratchet. You're going to need an 8mm wrench as well as a 10mm wrench as well as a half inch socket and a 15mm socket and an extension of 5 8 wrench and like an 11 16 wrench and a long. Screwdriver possibly you might need a flashlight to be able to see down in there, and then when you're adjusting the alternator to get the pins to go back in place you may need a rubber mallet, so that's about the only thing gonna need we're not gonna beat the alternator up don't worry, but that's just something that we can kinda persuade it to go exactly where we need it to go without beating it to death and leaving any mark so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into the video and show you me pulling the alternator completely out and putting a new one in and one of the things that we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and remove the battery so that's where we're going to start this is an 8 millimeter wrench and you could use a small socket if you wanted to okay so the first thing we have to do you're looking at the, the tensioner pulley on the front of the car in front of the engine now you've got to be able to take that and you're going to have to release the pressure on the serpentine belt to be able to get the belt off so you're not trying to fight that and it'll be very much easier to get the, the alternator off so what they did do in the earlier models of the C for there was plenty of room to get to that pulley and be able to get in there with a breaker bar but if you look down in there you can see that there is a cross member that goes right across the front between the radiator and the front of the motor so you're not going to be able to get a breaker bar in there so what my plan is is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take two wrenches and then I showed you in the video that I had a 5 8 wrench and an 11 16 wrench that bolt down there actually isn't as a 5 8 wrench, so I'm going to put that on there, and then I'm going to use the other end of the wrench and hook on an 11 16 so I can get a little bit of leverage on it, and that's how I'm going to release the pressure on the belt. Okay, you know if you need to be able to pull this back, but if you don't have the power that's strong enough to be able to pull that back, not a big deal, just grab another wrench like so, put it on there like that, and now you can make it. Pull this little guy back like so and you can just move the belt and make sure you keep your fingers out from underneath the pulley just in case that wrench slips off and it doesn't get your finger if you pull that off ever so carefully and just like leave it over there you can release this and you can leave that just like right there out of your way take this wrench off so it's out of your way. We have to take this cable loose right here this is a plug just for the air conditioner pump we're going to move that out of the way so we can get to this bolt here and then this one is a 15 millimeter we get this one off okay so we got that we're going to put that notable nut holder over here and then this bolt is not not threaded so it will just come out once you get it might be a little bit long winded but you can you can help it a little bit just depends on I've had them just slide right out of the way probably just sit depends on how the alternator is sitting in the bracket this one's going to be a little more difficult that's okay if there is no threads there the thing just slides right through it was the nut that we took off that hold it in place there we go see that well that one came out we got that one out of the way and then we have a 10 millimeter bolt here basically what happened is i smelt the electrical saw the rpm gauge start to jump i could smell it a little bit and then all of a Sudden I could start to hear it almost sounded like it had a supercharger on it or something and give the major gear whine so basically what you know what's happening is the bearings are going out in it so decide to go ahead and change it so now we have a 10 millimeter bolt right here so we're just going to take that off now this is the hole this one right here is the main purpose that we chain we take the battery loose in the beginning because if this was to come off and we move it over here and it comes off and it touches anything it's going to start a bunch of arcing and sparking so you don't want that to happen okay so now we're going to we're going to see if we get lucky enough that this will just come up and out if not we're going to have to use our screwdriver right here and a wheel to pry this up a little bit because it's kind of pinched in there and we've got one other connection that's down below and it's down here on the back side of the, the alternator this is where your long screwdriver comes into play you're just going to push this and it'll lift up and out of there you want to be careful that you don't reef anywhere on this part right here because this is where your air conditioner lines are at And there we go, we've got our new alternator here, and we're just going to go ahead, and we're going to set this little guy in place, and we're just wiggle it in here, and it's pretty much in place now. And so we just need to start reversing what we did, so we're going to first thing is let's get this, this bolt here start in, and remember I said it just, this one just slides in, so we just have to get this one adjusted correctly, so our bolts being a little bit of a pain, so... Can use, you can use a screwdriver to try to try to guide the, the hole. To 
from there, there we go, just like that. This point will turn on our ratchet here. It's just kind of fine at fighting his way through there. You can use your mallet here a little bit to be able to help it through, like, so just be careful, don't hit the alternator. Okay, so we've got our bolt started in here, but it's not just what not not wanting to thread all the way through because like I said, there is no thread. So what you can do is you can just use your mallet here to tap it in like so. Okay, so that's where it belongs. Then the next step you want to be able to do because you won't be able to get to it. If you don't do this now as you go to put this the alternator back into its place, you'll want to plug that plug in. Hopefully you can see that I'm going to plug that little guy back in like so and then continue to push the alternator down into place now once you get to that point you'll want to take off the nut here that they they supply it with the new one sometimes these don't match up with the one that you took off so try to use the one that comes with it i'm going to put that on so it's it's on there we'll snug it up here in just a minute okay and then we want to get this down in its place down down below here so sometimes you have to have just a little bit of an adjuster right there like so to get that to go so just very very tight clearance so at that point we're going to put this in here we'll move it up and down now to get this bolt started okay then we can go ahead and get the other bolt here going and i try to do that just for the simple fact that we're not tightening anything down so everything lines up the way it should and then once we get everything way it belongs then we'll go ahead and we'll align it now we'll tighten it up we're having to do a little bit of adjustment here to get this one in okay, so then once we've got that started then we can go back to our half inch socket. Do not recommend ever using any air tools to do this because this is all aluminum. You could strip it out if you don't get it and get it threaded correctly. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put the nut onto this piece here under this bolt. So I'm just going to start it by hand, I think, so get a ratchet in there so we can tighten this thing down and my bolt didn't spin here so it's, it's snugging up nice and tight, but because this there is no threads in here this bolt could actually start to spin on you if you do you know put your torques on the other side and tighten it up so at this point we've got we've got this bolt tight this bolt tight we've got this bolt we need to snug it up okay like that and then we need to tighten up the exciter wire which is right here my 10 millimeter wrench okay like so and then go ahead and plug this little guy back in and we're pretty much done with all of our connections and all of the bolts now the only thing that we have to do now is that we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our wrench again like we like i showed you before it's going to put that on there like so that way i can pull this back and i'm going to grab this grab the belt you're going to want to make sure that it's all stays on the pulleys this is coming back all the way okay but make sure that you do not get your fingers inside those pulleys We can take that wrench off so we're good. The only thing we have to do left is to reattach the battery. And we'll do that with our 8mm wrench, which is right here. Okay, I hear all the power coming back to the system. And you just have to snug it up. You don't have to make it super tight. You'll strip out the wet connector. So at that point, we are done. So all we need to do now is we just need to test the car, make sure that we have proper voltage. Output, and we're good to go. I'm going to fire it up, see what we get. And so she lit right up voltage and the noise is gone. Doesn't sound like a supercharger under the engine anymore. And the biggest telltale was the RPM gauge. The tachometer was bouncing from him like a thousand to three thousand. It was just going back and forth, back and forth. That part is gone. Also, anyway, that pretty much does it, guys. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel.